Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about dual booting with Windows 11 plus BitLocking. Uh, BitLocker is a full disk encryption that comes with uh, Microsoft Windows 11. The home, of, the home edition uh, kind of has a light version of it. Uh, Pro through Enterprise has a full-blown version of it. But we need to deal with it if we are going to dual boot with Linux. Uh, as with all other preparation steps, make sure you back up your data first. That way you don't lose anything, even if it crashes. And then part of that data is going to be the BitLocker key. There are two places to get it, and I will show you that real quick. All you, all you need to do is click on this search box down here, and you want to type in bit. If you don't have that search box, go ahead and click on the start button and type bit. Works the same way. And what we're looking for is right here where it says back up your recovery key. So when you hit that, we'll go ahead and print that recovery key to a PDF file. Uh, I've already got it printed, so I'm going to click cancel. Uh, but you just save that to like your documents or whatever. Uh, you could save it to the file. You could save it to your Microsoft account. Spoiler alert, it's already saved to your Microsoft account, which is the second way you can retrieve that key. Uh, before we get there, though, I'll go ahead and open Explorer. And it's in here in my recents. Basically, it looks like this. This is the recovery key we're looking for right here. We need to save this for later because Microsoft will complain. All right, so since I already got this open, we can also go to account.microsoft.com slash devices slash recovery key. When we hit enter, you can do this on any device uh, and log in with your account or unlock it with your PIN. You can do this on your phone if you happen to uh, not have your recovery key or if you're going through this install and you forgot to save it. It's still available online. It's this number right here. Again, that's account.microsoft.com slash devices slash recovery key. You may have to log in, uh, but there it is anyway. You'll need that for later. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started on the um, resizing of the drive. So you click that start again or search again and type format. And what we're looking for is create this one right here and it's in the control panel. Create and format hard disk partitions. And what we're looking for is the C drive. So we want this partition here in the center, the one that's currently highlighted for me. You can see the C colon right there. We don't want the EFI partition. We don't want the recovery partition. Well, this one here that says BitLocker encrypted. We're going to right click, click and choose shrink. Once this box here opens up, what we're going to do is click on search again. This time we're looking for the calculator. Unless you are an algebra teacher and you can do math pretty quickly, which is not me. What we're going to do is take this total size of disk up here at the top. This 2, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2. We're going to take that. 2, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2. And then we're going to divide that by 2 because we want to split the drive in half. Windows takes half, Linux takes half. When we hit equals, that comes up with this 1, 2, 1, 6, 0, 6. And we put that in this box right here. If we do not do this, we just leave that box blank as it is. Windows will resize it to exactly the amount of disk space you're currently using. And when you open up Explorer, it will tell you you only have like 50 megabytes of hard drive space left, which is not good. It's insane. Thanks, Microsoft. So anyway, we're just going to go ahead and split this disk completely in half. And we're going to click Shrink. We can go ahead and close the calculator. That's really the only thing we needed it for. So now we got half of the C drive for for Windows, we got the other half is unallocated, and we're going to take care of that next. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put in our trusty uh, Fedora uh, USB, and then we're going to restart our computer. Give me just a second while I do while I get the USB plugged in. I'm going to pause the video. Okay, so now the USB is plugged in. There's one thing we want to do just to double check to make sure everything is going to work. Since we've shrunk that partition, we want to make sure we can still boot into Windows before we go any further. So let's go ahead and reboot. Just to make sure that shrinkage took effect the way it's supposed to and Windows is not going to get angry. If Windows gets angry, we can't proceed any further anyway. So I'll go ahead and take a second to uh, 
remind you that if you like these videos, want to see more of them like it, go ahead and make sure you click like, subscribe, smash that notification bell so you uh, are informed of new videos that come up. After this video, we're going to do another dual booting video, except for this time we're going to talk about dual booting the correct way. There's a right way and there is a wrong way. Um, using the same disc and splitting it in half like this is not ideal. It works, but it's not ideal. The ideal way to do it is with two discs, and that's what we're going to do in the next video. We go ahead and log back in with our pin. So we were able to go ahead and, and get logged back in. Windows is not uh, being grouchy. We go in here and double check. We are we still have plenty of room on this hard drive. We split that 256 gig drive in half. So we're golden here. So the next step is to go ahead and reboot. And this time when we reboot, we're going to interrupt the boot process and we're going to switch boot devices. And that can be done uh, by choosing the one-time boot menu with your computer. Uh, usually it's, um, it's F12, F10, F8, delete, escape, F2, just depends on what uh, type of computer you have. Uh, on Dell's it's usually either uh, the delete key or the F12 key. So we're gonna go ahead and select our USB drive here. And on this, we're gonna go ahead and hit enter, and then we're gonna continue boot because we don't want to modify anything just yet. So we'll go ahead and start Fedora Workstation Live. and wait for this to boot up. Okay, and again, the distribution we're using here is Fedora 42 Workstation. This is the one that's got the new web UI installer. Uh, this was the target of the angst in the comment section of the video that I did showcasing this installer. Uh, there was a little bit of a back and forth with a user uh, about dual booting. Well, first of all, in my defense, the video that he posted the comments on had nothing to do with dual booting. However, I decided that it's probably a good idea to go ahead and make a video describing how to do this anyway. Uh, dual booting is certainly a thing that's not going away. Uh, Windows 11 is not going to go away. BitLocker is not going to go away. So we might as well go ahead and cover it now. As soon as it's unbooting. There we go. Okay, so from here we're just going to hit install. Okay, so then we're gonna hit next. All right, so we're gonna stop right here for just a second and read the screen. We have one disk that's currently in here. It's 256 gigs, it is an NVMe. We currently have it split in half. Half of it is being used by Windows, the other half is blank. We're gonna keep this option selected exactly the way it is where it says share disk with other operating system. This is important. If you try to change that to use entire disk or you try to manually mount, that's all on you. Use entire disk is literal. It will erase the entire disk. So we're going to leave it exactly the same way it is. We do not want to reclaim any additional space. Just leave it exactly the way it is and click next. And then click next again because we're not really going to just we're not going to discuss encrypting data in this video. All right. So this is what it's going to do is it's going to take that unused portion. It's going to share the operating system, but it's going to take the unused portion and it's going to chop it up in this fashion right here. That's fine. We'll just go ahead and click install and we let it go. It's going to, it's going to do the formatting and everything. It's going to install uh, the entire operating system. It's going to configure Grub, everything. While it's doing that though, I'm going to go ahead and push pause, all right? Okay, so now that those four steps are done, you are met with this window right here. It says successfully installed. At this point in time, you might want to breathe a sigh of relief and think, oh, okay, well, I guess we can go ahead and move on with our lives. We're going to exit the live installer, reboot our system, and we're finished. However, that is not true at all. What we're going to do here is we're going to restart. 
And the reason why we're not done is because we want to double check to make sure everything is booting correctly. We want to re reboot Windows. We want to reboot Linux. We want to make sure everything is booting the way it's supposed to because nothing is more frustrating than setting up a environment for two, three hours because you're trying to get everything working exactly the way you want to only to find out that the other operating system is messed up. That's a whole le another level of frustration. So we're going to let it run. It's going to reboot. I'm going to stop it here for just a second. Uh, you can pause the countdown by hitting the down arrow and the up arrow. Um, earlier, there was a blue screen on here that I told it to just go ahead and continue. What that was, and I, I failed to mention what it was. What that is, is Fedora was wanting to change the boot order of your uh, disks at that point in time, which is an unnecessary step. When you install uh, Grub, we'll do that for you. So we, we told it not to do it right then and there because we knew later on in the installer that Grub was going to do it for us. Now you notice that you have Fedora here on your screen, Fedora Rescue, and then there's your Windows Boot Manager. So we have to double check this on our first boot. We have to stop here at this window and check because if that's missing, something went wrong. All right, so we got Fedora and we got Windows. Let's go ahead and boot for, into Fedora, which is gonna be the default. If you reboot, get up, walk away, go grab a drink, come back, it will boot into Linux by default now. So if you're doing Windows, if you're on the Windows side of things, let's say you're doing a Windows update or something like that, and you reboot, do not be surprised when it comes back and it's on Linux because Linux is the default. Let's go ahead and zip through this here real quick. It's not really part of this demonstration, but we're going to go ahead and do it while we're here anyway. I'm not in the mountain time zone. I'm in the central time zone. All right, we're not going to worry about setting that other stuff up. We are going to go ahead and sign in or create our username and password here. And I like the username of LTL. Next, and then we need to give it a password. There we go. All right, we're done. We're going to start using Fedora. Skip to the desktop, and then you can start using Fedora if you want. However, like I said, it is best to go ahead and reboot again. This time we're gonna test Windows to make sure Windows is, is actually working. Because again, you don't wanna work on this for two or three hours only to find out that your other operating system is not working correctly. So we're gonna go ahead and restart again. Okay, however, this time we're going to test the Windows side of things to make sure that's done. So we're going to go ahead and down arrow until we get to Windows Boot Manager. We're going to hit Enter, and this is what you're met with. This is why I told you to back up your BitLocker key. This is the thing I was telling you earlier that we are expecting this. So if you remember, I told you to go ahead and print that out on a piece of paper, save that PDF to the cloud. You can always get to this um, from the cloud, like on your phone or what have you. And this is where you need to put that long key in. So that's going to be, let me go ahead and get this put in real quick. Now, generally speaking, you want to keep this key private. This is not necessarily something you want to uh, share. However, I, there's no danger in me doing this right here, right now, because uh, as soon as I'm done with this video, this is getting formatted and uh, getting ready for the next video anyway. So this key really, even though it should be held secret, it's going to be invalid here in about 20 minutes. So, <laughs> All right, so once that's in there, double check it and hit enter, and it's going to boot up. Once we get into Windows, we're still not done. There's one other thing we need to do. 
All right, so now that you're into Windows, go ahead and put your pin in. All right, and remember, BitLocker was grouchy, so we need to go ahead and type bit, or if you find it here, just go ahead and manage BitLocker again. What we're gonna do is we're gonna suspend protection. Click yes. All right, now this now notice it says uh, resume. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reboot one more time. And this time around, when we get back to the Grub menu, we have to go ahead and reboot back into Windows. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go back into Windows. What that does is it causes a BitLocker, the key to be registered, it causes, uh, when you suspend, it's gonna resume itself, and then it's going to uh, remember that key. So it doesn't ask you for that key every single time. If you skip that suspend step, every single time you reboot, you gotta put that BitLocker key back in. This just makes it store it. Notice we didn't have to put it in again. We're gonna open Manage BitLocker, and we're gonna look here. Right here where it says Suspend, if it says Resume, go ahead and click Resume Protection and then reboot one more time. If it says Suspend like it is here, you should be good to go. All right, so now we've booted into Windows. We're gonna reboot one last time because we like to reboot. That's why we're dual booting anyway. We like to reboot twice as much. This time around, we're gonna double check to make sure Fedora is working because we, we modified it again, because we gave it the BitLocker key. Okay, so this time it should go ahead and boot straight in. And we are ready to log into Linux. And there you have it. You now have a functional dual booting Windows 11 with BitLocker without turning BitLocker off or disabling it, which is just dumb. It's there for a reason. And we successfully get into both sites without each one of either one of them getting grouchy. Again, make sure you click like, subscribe, and mash that notification bell because the video I'm about to record literally in just a few seconds, but you're not going to see it for a couple of days, is how to dual boot properly using two drives. You don't want to miss it. It's not what you think. Anyway, see you in the next video.